exciting superstars. I am so excited for this episode this week. This episode is all about how to still school your horse outside of the arena. It's such an important skill to have because it keeps you fresh and you happy and you excited, but also your horse as well. It gives them different environments. So when you go to competitions, they're less likely to spook and it really just mixes it up for them. But people who often struggle and say to me, oh, Alicia, I know I should hack. I know I should do things outside the arena, but I feel like I'm letting my training go. So this episode is all about solving that for you. All about giving you some exercises that you can do while you're outside of the arena, which still help your horse's suppleness, help your horse's ability to be good in the training scale. I can't wait to show you this. I hope you enjoy it. and we think, oh, if we can't be in the arena, we can't train our horse for dressage. That's not really the case at all. We can use hacking or outside of the arena in such, an ama in such amazing different ways, okay? So you can do things like just give them an, a relaxing day, which you just saw me there, just walking up the path, nice relax, nice over the back, stretching, relaxing through his walk. And we all know about that. That's just, you know, a normal hack. And that's a way to get them out of the arena, get them feeling good, and just let them have a nice stretchy day. But you can also use the undulation of the land and dressage movements to help you bring dressage in the arena outside as well. The more your horses can get used to that, the better you're gonna be. Maybe you don't have a dressage arena. Maybe you can only get to a dressage arena twice a week. Let's show you other ways that you can practice your arena work out of the dressage arena. And I guarantee you, not only will it be good for your horse, you won't take a step back. You might even go further forward in doing things like this. It's quite phenomenal. In fact, this horse, I taught him how to do his one tempies out here because then he could hear the rhythm. So let's have a look at how we can use the dressage arenas exercises, shoulder in, travers, things like that, out here in an open area with the undulation of the land, etc. etc. So let's give that a go. So think about what you're trying to achieve. We want days where the horse can just relax a little bit, but still that he becomes supple. So we still want him to use his shoulders, use his hind legs and bend and move to where we want. So here with Wessel, I'm gonna ask him to do a little bit travers. And you see already how he drifts, he drifts to the wall here. He goes, I'll put my quarters in, but you can't control my shoulder. So I say, no Wessel, actually, I want your shoulder to stay on the line, which is this, this up the hill. And I want you to keep your quarters out. And he goes, oh, okay, but that's a bit weird. I've got no line to stick to. But you see how that would make you more honest. Then I'm about to run out of room here. So what I'm gonna do is take the angle off a little bit, turn a walk bureau. Doesn't matter that it grounded a bit, he just ran out of room, but he gets the idea. And then I go back to my travers exercise. And my whole concept here is that I say to Wessel, right, I want you to go into travers, but I want you to keep the shoulder on the line that I tell you to keep it on. Okay, because if I let him go to his own devices, he does this, so I stop, I just keep, ask the traveler and let him go where he wants. And you see, he just sort of follows this line along here, follows this grass line. But actually, I want him to be a bit more in the center. Good boy. And do follow his own message. Very good. And then again, I'll go walk pirouette. So now I knew that his steps were a little bit big before, because he couldn't quite make it. That was a bit better. Still a little bit big leaning in. And then back into traveler again. And I say, stay on my line. I don't worry if he's too deep. I don't worry about that. I just let the front go. It's more just about behind the shoulders. And then I'm gonna swap it to the other way. And I say, okay, where's what? And you see how he wants to drift over there. So what I'm trying to do here is do travel on my line so that he's just constantly following where I want him to go. Ah, that was a better one not where he feels like he wants to go. And what exercise I'm trying to achieve here is that his shoulders stay on the same line all the time. And it's just the hind leg behind me changing direction. So you can see, they really enjoy it. It's a really nice thing for them. Good boy. 
but it keeps still working on their suppleness and making them better in the way that they go and also teaching you to have a better more true and honest shoulder control so then let's have a little bit look at how our position affects the travers because this is a really really good thing to look at so have a look if i sit this way and then put the travers line on do you see i'm sitting to my my idea where i was sitting before but actually i'm sitting out here okay and you can see how off that looks, how wrong that looks in the way that you're going with the horse. Yeah, you can see he falls out here. It's hard to keep him on a line and it's not natural. It doesn't seem flowing with the horse. Okay, we'll do it again on this side. So if I do travel, but I think, but I sit to the outside a little bit. I'm leaning a little bit this way. You see again, I can get the travel, but it doesn't look quite right, does it? Let's change one thing. When you're riding Travers, you have a banana shape. So this side here is my big bit of a banana. And this side here is my little bend. Sit to the inside of that banana. And you see then you look straighter and more in the center of that. And that then encourages the horse to be able to move with you. Good boy, Wessie with you not against you so you're sitting in the banana hole okay so be quite obvious about it change direction change spots and that's what people say when they say bend them around your inside leg they don't mean leg yield away from your inside leg they mean sit in the hole sit in a little bit of the banana so that is a really exaggerated version of what i'm talking about Okay, and then I'll show you a less exaggerated version and more the true version. When he goes big on this side, your body get you get pushed out there because there's more rib cage out there. So you need to counteract that when you ride. So here, I'm just staying in the center of the saddle, but I'm making sure that I don't let physics take over and have me sit where the rib cage is big. I'm making sure that where the rib cage is big, that is open and my weight isn't there so that he's actually got room to go there. And that's what gives him this massive ability to turn like this or put his quarters out like this because my position is in a place that allows him to want to do the right thing. My position's in a place where it says to him, I'm not sitting here so you can make this part of your rib cage big. I'm not sitting here so you can make this part of your rib cage big. And you can see it's all to do with where I sit and less about my hands. So your seat can make your life so much easier. We're going to do a travers to this direction, so a travers right. So our left rib cage is gonna get massive. If I sit there, look how much angle I get. If I move where I sit, look at how much angle I get. And then I add a shoulder in. Oh, there's the shoulders go. Now I can make it four tracks. I can make it a half a track. But you see how he wavers a little bit because he thinks, oh, I don't have a wall, so I don't really know what you're doing. So what you're doing here is playing with that shoulder in. You can also have him come up a little bit in the pole. Whoop, there you go. He moves around a bit, adds a bit of leg yield to it. Yeah, and you see he really struggles with this because it's uphill and asking him to go on an angle that he's not so comfortable with. Good boy. But you see he does submit and he does do it. So what this does is really teaches you hey, you can really work with the horse and get them to do what you want versus what they're just pre-programmed to do in the arena. Put a shoulder in, whoop, but we keep the shoulders whoop, on the same line. And this is the tricky part. There we go, and he found it. Then we're gonna swap it to a shoulder in the other way, which he thinks, oh, this is confusing. There we go. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Then we get a leg yield, we don't want that. Whoop. <laughs> shoulder in there it is and then a travers again very good and we give him a big pat so you see even for a very schooled horse it can be quite confusing for them to understand to listen to those aids and listen to what's going on out here in this really open area and I'm not going to do too much because it's a little bit wet today but it shows how you can also do exactly the same exercises in the trot as well 
Very good. And you see the front, I just leave alone. Let him do what he wants to do. And it's a really great thing for you to see in terms of rhythm, because you can hear it. So let's listen. So we go trot first. Rhythm's there. Travel. Travel the other way. Travel the other way. Travel the other way. But what do we know about Travel? Travel is ultimately a half pass. So we can go Travel, leg yield to our left, turn that into a half pass, leg yield back to our left again, turn that into a half pass. Good boy. And this is what you can do with them. You can just keep playing with the work and find ways to make them enjoy themselves and use their bodies in a more athletic but less forced way. And so often, when you get back into the arena, they're like different horses. It's quite phenomenal. And let's go. Leg yield, half pass. If this is something that excites you, let me know. Let me see what more I can do. Give me some examples of things that you want to see. Good boy. And we can do it. It's so much fun. It makes you see dressage from such a different perspective. This, this whole segment could be making your horse more supple. This could be getting your horse to stop spooking. This could be a step towards you getting less fear in your riding. This could be a step towards making them more athletic so that they jump higher, jump quicker. There's so many aspects that this sort of training can help you with. Watch it today. Let me know what you think and let me know segments you want to know more about. And I will expand on this as much as I possibly can. I hope this is a little, a little eye opener for you and that you loved it. And um, as I was going to say, this is something I've done with Wessel for many, many years. He's a special, special child and um, it's made him the horse he is today. It's been a great, a great thing to do. Thank you so much for watching guys. I hope you all got some inspiration to get out of the arena and still school your horses and have a great time. Don't forget to subscribe. We really need your help to get more subscriptions so that we have more manpower so we're able to do phenomenal things. Look for our competition. When we hit a million subscribers, we are going to give away. We're going to pay someone for an entire year to learn how to ride dressage. We're going to pay you 30,000 US dollars a year. I won't get too much more into it now, but click the link below and get into it. Help us help you. We wanted to spend more and more time helping you achieve your riding success. Bye guys. Mwah.